Hey folks, welcome once again to the Supreme Court Historian YouTube channel. Your friendly Supreme Court chronicler welcomes you to another contract law case. This is Colonel McPherson versus Appanna, and this particular case deals with the very basic uh, terms of uh, contract law, the very basic definitions in contract law, an offer and its acceptance. All of us laypersons as well as lawyers are constantly involved in some contract or the other. We make an offer to somebody to perform a particular service for them and receive a particular consideration in return and that party accepts that particular offer. Even a simple transaction as filling up uh, your vehicle's fuel tank is also contract law in action. Right, the price of uh, petrol or diesel that is displayed over there uh, is an invitation by the petrol pump, and you offer to uh, buy whatever liters of uh, fuel at that particular price, and the petrol pump accepts the offer and performs the duty of filling up those many liters of fuel. That is contract law in action, as simple as that. It of course becomes much more complex when big ticket transactions are uh, are being carried out and McPherson versus Appanna deals with one such big ticket transaction. It deals with property law. A particular bungalow was being transferred from one person to another and that is where this particular dispute arose. The case was decided by the Supreme Court on the 9th of February 1951 but the events took place at least seven years before this. They took place in the province of Kurg. Kurg is in southern Karnatak today. And at that time, it was what was known as a chief commissioner's province. And that adds a little more complexity to our case, which anyway has some rather complex facts, which I have simplified in uh, in these just three or four bullet points. July 1944, this gentleman Appanna offered to buy Colonel McPherson's bungalow, so-called Morvern Lodge, for 5,000 rupees. And Colonel McPherson responded with, I will not accept anything less than 10,000 rupees. Um, Colonel McPherson I have referred to as C and Appanna as A. And uh, so A received C's reply that I will not accept anything below 10,000 rupees. The minimum price of the minimum value of my bungalow, Mauvan Lodge, is 10,000 rupees. A responded to this communication from C saying that I confirm my offer to buy Mauvan Lodge for 10,000 rupees. So basically, A has treated C's response of 9th August as a <clears throat> as an offer as a counter offer basically what he is saying is that i offered 5000 c responded with a counter offer of 10000 and i now accept this counter offer of 10000 rupees but c did not sell Morven lodge to a for 10000 rupees he sold it to a third party somebody else altogether that somebody is not mentioned in our supreme court judgment which is why I'm going to call him B. I mean, we already have A and C, so why miss out on B? C instead sold Mauvern Lodge in September 1944 to this certain B for 11,000 rupees. As far as C is concerned, he got a good offer and he disposed of the property that he was holding. As far as A is concerned, he believed that he had a completed contract with C, that C had asked for 10,000, A had accepted this 10,000 rupee valuation but instead of selling it to A for 10,000 rupees as allegedly promised, C ended up selling it to B for 11,000 rupees. So you know what is going to happen next. A is going to sue C for the performance, the specific performance of this contract which was alleged by A and C. Now comes into the picture the fact that this was a chief commissioner's province. The fact that it was a chief commissioner's province meant that the judicial structure was slightly different and even the civil procedure code article uh, section rather that is that was applicable was different. You could 
take an appeal from a judicial commissioner's decree directly to the federal court back then that is how it was this these chief commissioners provinces were you might call them second rung states somewhere between today's state and union territory you know if you try a middle tier between states and union territories that is what was called a chief commissioners state uh, chief commissioners province uh, it included uh, provinces directly ruled by british india as well as provinces that were ruled by a prince as or a princely state these became part c states after independence before the states reorganization act of 1956 so for this particular period uh, kurg was a part c state when this case was being heard but when the facts had actually occurred it was a chief commissioner's province which meant that apanna sued colonel macpherson for breach of contract in the judicial commissioner's court in april 1946 about um, year and a half or uh, 20 odd months after the facts the judicial commissioner of kurg found in apanna's favor and this is very interesting he found he held that a indeed did have a completed contract with c c was supposed to sell it to a instead of selling the house the bungalow mohan lodge to b so the judicial commissioner decided to re- award damages compensation to a of 3000 rupees this is very interesting normally when you have a, a, a contract case you try to ensure its specific performance that is the judicial commissioner if he thought that a indeed had a completed contract then c should carry out the promise that was made in that completed contract that is the judicial commissioner should have actually ordered c to sell the house to a instead of to whoever that mr b turned out to be instead the judicial commissioner uh, rewarded a a compensation of 3000 rupees he ordered colonel macpherson to pay apanna 3000 rupees for not carrying out the promise that he had made so colonel macpherson under section 109 of the civil procedure code as it stood then section 109 has been amended since then amended in 1971 this particular section and of course it now reads appeals to supreme court and not appeals to federal court and many other such changes the entire section has been replaced not just a few words here and there but as it stood then it allowed macpherson to appeal directly to the federal court which of course had ceased to exist by now and the appeal was heard by the supreme court of india that is where we come into the picture and although it might not seem a very complicated case uh, it does deal with some very basic issues in contract law so it is always good to have uh, the supreme court give its opinion on what is an offer and what is an acceptance and what is something else that goes on during this as i said i have simplified the facts over here there are a couple of middlemen mr young and mr uh, mr youngman and mr white who also feature in these uh, transactions uh, they are like middlemen the estate director of uh, colonel macpherson's estate and the estate caretaker of colonel macpherson's estate in kurg coffee estate i am assuming so anyway time for the arguments and apanna's argument was pretty straight forward 9th of august when uh, Colonel Macpherson r- responded with, "I will not accept anything less than ten thousand rupees for Morvan Lodge." Apna said that this was a counter offer, and he accepted it. So a contract was completed. Macpherson claimed that his communication was merely an exchange of information. He said that Apna had offered five thousand, and then Macpherson's uh, estate director had valued the uh, bungalow at. 10000 and therefore macpherson re- ro- basically has rejected apanna's offer he has not made a, made a counter offer he has said that i will not accept anything less than 10000 so basically he is inviting offers for 10000 or above is macpherson's argument now fortunately for us and fortunately for the supreme court of india these facts co- coincide almost exactly with a very very famous contract law case harvey versus Facey Harvey versus Facey is as famous as the Hadley versus Baxendale that we discussed in the previous contract law video that was uh, Janki uh, 
Pannalal versus uh, Mohanlal, Pannalal Jankidas versus Mohanlal that dealt with uh, Hadley versus Baxendale, but in an indirect manner, this is directly uh, similar to Harvey versus Facey. Harvey versus Facey, the facts had taken place in Jamaica, so the appeal once again lay with the same uh, superior court that is the Privy Council of the House of Lords. In 1893, the Privy Council heard this particular case, the facts of which were that Harvey wanted to buy Facey's, uh, I'm assuming this is another bungalow, called Bumper Hall Pen. Will you sell us Bumper Hall Pen? Tele telegraph the lowest cash price. Facey responded with, lowest price is £900. Harvey responded with, we agreed to buy for £900. It is almost identical to what happened with Morvan Lodge between Appanna and McPherson. Harvey, just like Appanna, wanted to buy that particular bungalow. Uh, Facey, just like McPherson, responded with the lowest price. Harvey assumed that he was being offered that price and agreed to buy it. The Privy Council uh, came into the picture when Facey refused to sell for £900. So Harvey said that we have a contract, you should abide by it and therefore Harvey sued for the specific performance of that contract. Their lordships held that the mere statement of the lowest price at which the vendor would sell contains no implied contract to sell at that price to the persons making the inquiry. It is just a quotation that is being given. It is indeed in fact an invitation for offers. It is almost like what happens at an auction. The auctioneer uh, displays uh, some artifact and claims that you know bidding starts at hundred dollars. Bidding starts at hundred dollars. You are supposed to bid after that for hundred dollars. That is basically what has happened over here, according to the Privy Council and indeed according to the Supreme Court. That the starting price is ten thousand rupees. If indeed Morven Lodge is put up for sale by Colonel McPherson, then anybody willing should offer at least 10,000 and then if there are multiple offers then Colonel McPherson would sell to the highest bidder which is indeed what he ended up doing. So the three judge bench, just a three judge bench here and we have a new name as far as our list of justices is concerned, Justice N. Chandrasekhar Iyer joining B.K. Mukherjee and Sayyid Fazal Ali. By this time we had a full quota of judges on the Supreme Court as prescribed by the constitution. They held entirely, completely thoroughly in favour of Colonel McPherson that his statement was an invitation for offers and did not constitute a completed contract. The appeal was allowed and more importantly the judicial commissioner's decree was set aside. McPherson need not pay 3000 rupees to Appanna and B need not vacate Morvan Lodge either. B's purchase of C's estate or C's bungalow was upheld by the Supreme Court. A very, very straightforward decision, but a very, very important aspect of contract law being discussed. Offer acceptance and invitation to offer. The mistake that uh, Aparna did was that he considered, he assumed that I won't sell it for anything below 10,000 rupees. He considered that as an offer, as a counter offer, when actually it was basically a starting point for negotiations that this is the minimum price that I'm willing to sell for and this is the minimum valuation. If you want to buy, don't offer me 5000 rupees, you should offer me something at 10,000 or above. That is what McPherson's statement amounted to. That is what we call an invitation for offers and not an offer at all. Then the um, party, in this case Appanna, should have made an offer of 10,000 or whatever he could afford and then McPherson would have responded with an actual acceptance. That was not the case over here as held by the Supreme Court. Uh, straightforward judgment but if you like complications in your life, I would advise reading the judgment because a lot of other parties enter the picture, that fellow Youngman and also White and a lot of communications between four or five individuals. There's another person named who doesn't feature at all in the judgment. There's another person who actually ends up buying the place who is not named in the judgment. Lots of fun and games. But the thing to remember is Harvey versus Facey, the difference between an offer and an invitation for offers. McPherson was inviting offers when he 
spoke of 10,000 rupees. So that's that from me in this particular video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it has been instructive and I shall interact with you again soon. Thanks for everything.